Hi, my name is Ken Abley. I'm a physical therapist and certified prosthetist at Monroe Biotechnology. Today we're going to demonstrate the appropriate way to ace wrap a transtibial and transfemoral limb. The benefits are improved circulation, better pain control, and faster time towards fitting of a temporary device. Okay, so here's our first model, obviously a well-heeled transtibial amputee. Before we even begin to wrap his limb, I want to show you that I have two four-inch ace wraps that are sewn together. Um, even though his limb is fairly short, it's, it's going to take two four-inch ace wraps to do that. I use a four-inch ace wrap instead of a six-inch ace wrap because a limb this size, if I use a six-inch, I'm going to get all these dog ears towards the bottom of his limb, and I don't want that. You don't want to have the wrap come off of your hand like this. It's just too hard to keep the tension even while it's folding off of your hand like that. It's a lot easier if, the, if it comes off like this. Now you can control the tension a lot better. It's a lot easier just to let that roll off of your hand like that. So to start the wrap, you want to take the wrap and pull the tissue anteriorly like this, cross it, and now you've got where the most swelling is, posterior lateral and posterior medial, you have that covered. And I'm gonna bring the wrap up. The higher I go, the less compression I offer. I come down, everything's captured. I will eventually come down and get that little dog ear down there. I wanna make sure my technique is good. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna put compression on that area. I'm going to keep moving proximally. Again, as I go up, the tension is less. And I want to bring the wrap to about two inches proximal to where the trim line will end. In this case, it's about two inches above the attachment of the adductor magnus. Now we have a wrap that's, that has more compression at the bottom than it does at the top. There are no circumferential wraps to create any venous tourniquets. The blood flow is supported. It's going to move the blood flow distal to proximal because there's more compression distally than proximally. What I would like to demonstrate here is that most of the time when you're doing these ACE wrap techniques, you're not doing it on a well-healed, well-vascularized limb. You're doing it on a post-op limb, maybe day two or three. That limb is very sensitive. It's going to have surgical dressing on it. Sometimes those are very bulky. Sometimes those are small. So how are you gonna ace wrap that limb and keep that surgical dressing in place? One of the ways to do it is just to take a normal one-ply sock, get your hands on the inside of it, and gently pull it up on the limb like this. Now that one-ply sock isn't offering any compression at all, but what it's doing is it's holding the dressing in place. And now you can go back with your ace wrap and you can wrap it better. Now the ace wrap's gonna stay in place. You're not gonna dislodge that post-operative dressing. The nurses aren't gonna be calling you every two hours saying, please come and rewrap this limb for me. And everyone's gonna be a lot happier. Now on a post-operative case like this at day two or three, I may not be able to wrap it as tight as I normally would. I have to rely on what, the, on what my patient tells me is the appropriate tension. Because what might feel good for a half an hour by two in the morning might drive them crazy. So the next day when you see them, you may have to ask them, was that wrap too tight, too loose, how was that? And then you can adjust your technique. But the principles are still the same. You want more, more compression distally than proximally. You want to keep things moving in a crisscross pattern. You want, you want to improve the circulation from distal to proximal. But what I would like to show you now is one of the common frustrations with an ACE wrap. And that is, you start the wrap. You start the wrap, just like, it, just like I just demonstrated. And you're coming up. And I have my cruciform pattern going. And already, the wrap is starting to slip. Okay, 
People get frustrated with that. This thing isn't gonna slip off this time. This is what I'm gonna do. Okay, there. Now, the, now I'll go back to my crisscross pattern. And now this will stay in place. There's my wrap. It looks great from the outside. Everything looks crisscrossed. But right in the middle, because of my frustration of having it sliding off, I anchored it right there. And there's a picture that I can demonstrate what it looks like when that happens. The arterial supply is able to move into the limb. The limb greatly swells and we create a venous tourniquet, so we have a real problem. All because we got frustrated and we wrapped it too tight circumferentially in one area. The other thing, incidentally, on this picture, if you notice at the tibial tubercle, in four short hours, this fellow also developed a, an ulcer over his tibial tubercle from the ACE wrap. So one of the items on that monograph is that you don't want to ace wrap bony limbs. Even if they're post-op, if there's a very prominent tibial tubercle or a very prominent fibular head, you just don't want to ace wrap those. There's another picture which demonstrates a limb where the surgeon forgot to trim the distal tibia well and the distal tibia is just about poking through his skin. You would never ever ace wrap a limb like that. It's just too dangerous. The third photo, the individual ace wrapped his limb just slightly tighter proximally than distally. You want your ace wrap to be tighter distally than proximally. Another common mistake that you'll see, and this is presented a lot in many of the publications that try to demonstrate ace wrapping techniques, is they'll start to wrap along the anterior surface of the limb, bring it down over the front, and then come around like this. And the problem is that while this looks like a nice wrap, you've just created a lot of tension along the distal tibia and you've taken the incision line and you've stretched it and you haven't compressed it. And remember one of the goals is you want to take this posterior tissue and bring it forward. That's where most of the edema is. What you've done now is you've just taken all that tissue and you've pointed it, you've, you've pushed it backwards. But the main problem is that you've created a lot of pressure, localized pressure right over the distal anterior distal tibia. And that's not something you want to do. Even though I could make this wrap look real nice, it would be an unhealthy wrap because of the way it was started. So don't begin your wraps along the anterior surface of the, of the tibia. We're now going to demonstrate ace wrapping on a transfemoral amputee. Now typically you'll only ever be doing this on a recent transfemoral amputation. There's really no need to ace wrap limbs once they're wearing a prosthesis. So when you see this limb, when you have orders to go ace wrap this limb or provide some compressive therapy, the way we do it is we apply a very loose fitting compressive shrinker over whatever wound dressing they have on. Now why not just use a compressive shrinker? Well, number one, for this to be effective, you would have to pull all the pucker out of this seam in order for there to be enough compressive therapy for it to have any meaning or effectiveness. On a post-operative case, you could never ever pull that up so tight because it would hurt. So what we do is when we, when we come up to fit these, we'll fit a very loose compressive shrinker on the person's limb right over whatever wrapping they have on and then we'll ace wrap over that. Now this limb, a four inch or six inch, it's kind of in between. Because my hands are small, I'm going to try it again with two four inch ace wraps together. And once again, as an anchor, I'm going to start it around his waist. The wrap's going to unroll. Now, I want him to be able to use the restroom without, without taking the wrap off. So I'm going to bring this underneath his underwear, ask him to bring his leg out to the side a little bit. I'm going to come up and I'm going to get as high as I can on that medial soft tissue. And then I'm going to come down and now I'm going to start to compress his limb and, and lift 
with as much compression as I can on that soft tissue. I'm gonna come up again. I'm gonna come down again. I'm gonna lift, and, and again, I'm gonna apply more contact, more compression distally than I am proximally. Come up to the inside, come down, get that bottom wrapped. I'm gonna keep moving in a cruciform pattern, never in a circle. And when I go distally, it's gonna be tighter, proximally looser. And then there's my wrap. And I'll go ahead and I'll attach it with my clips or my Velcro or whatever I have there. So now we have a wrap where there's more compression distally than proximally. It's anchored well. It's not gonna slip off because that compressive shrinker underneath is offering some friction so it can't slide off. This can stay on there for hours. This concludes our presentation of demonstrating ACE wrapping techniques for transtibial and transfemoral amputees. And while it may seem difficult, it's just like learning how to tie your tie. Once you learn how to do it, it's in your muscle memory and it's easy to do. So once you begin practicing ACE wrapping techniques, feeling the ACE wrap as it comes off your hand, learning how much tension you're applying to the soft tissue, it's an art that can be developed. It's something that has to be practiced to get good at. But the benefits are worth it because patients report much better pain control, circulation is improved, and this usually leads to a faster prep fitting. So if you're having trouble with your ACE wrapping, give us a call. We'd be happy to come out and demonstrate. Find another therapist who's skilled at it, who's done it a lot, or simply practice doing it.